Right, to explain this about the valving system, we need to look at the heart of its function, and that is in the sump. OK, so when the engine is running and the crankshaft is, of course, turning, that turns the camshaft. And that's because the gear on the crankshaft is splined with the gear on the camshaft. And if we take a look at this particular camshaft, we will see that there are two special areas on it. These are what the camshaft is named after. These are the actual cams. And as you can see, as the camshaft rotates, it rotates these upper and lower areas of the cams. So when the camshaft is fitted in its correct position within the engine and the engine turns, this rotates those small oval shaped cams to their high position and that pushes up on a metal structure above it. These are the cam followers. And as the camshaft continues to turn and the raised points move away, those cam followers come back down to the lower points. These are what the cam followers look like. So we've got one here and one behind it on this particular engine. But when assessing the camshaft, counting the actual cams tells you how many valves the engine actually has. Of course, this engine has got an inlet and an exhaust valve. And let's say this was a camshaft from a four cylinder engine, then there'd be four sets of two because it would need two valves for each cylinder. That would be on a basic four stroke engine. So then when the cam rotates to its raised points, pushing up the cam follower, the cam follower pushes up onto this structure here. This is a push rod and it goes right up from the cam followers, right to the top of the engine, to the top of the valves. The upward pressure of the push rod pushes the back of this pivot. That pushes the front downwards. This specially designed pivot is known as the tappet. And the tappet is held on with a special bolt in the middle there with a specially designed pivot point. So as the tappet lowers, it pushes against this spring and lowers it. This is called the valve spring. And the tip of the valve is attached to the top of each spring. And so this valve will sit in the cylinder head, something like that, through a special hole in the cylinder head called a valve guide. And the very tip of the valve stem hooks into a special collet at the top of the valve like that. They're firmly fixed together. And when that's in place, the valve spring sits on top like this. And that's where the tip is hooked firmly into place there on the valve. And these little metal followers sit on top there like that. So that downward pressure from the tappet doesn't affect the top of the valve stem itself. And to make it easier to set the tappets, which I don't cover in this video. So when the valve is in its position in the cylinder head and attached to its spring, and the front of the tappet pushes down on the spring, and of course the valve stem, this pushes the valve down and opens the valve. When the camshaft moves further and the raised point moves away and the cam follower is now resting on the lower part of the cam, this allows the push rod to follow the cam follower downwards and the release of that pressure allows the valve spring to spring back up. And that pulls the valve back up. As the camshaft continues to turn throughout the engine's use, this of course is a constant cycle. And of course on this particular engine there's two sets of cams and cam followers because we have two valves, the inlet and the exhaust. And the principles of what I've explained works the same for both. You'll notice that the raised points on each cam rotate round at different times. That's of course because we want the valves to open at different times to allow the vital four strokes of the four stroke engine to take place. So when the camshaft is fitted to the engine and splined with the crankshaft, there are two points that must meet up there for this timing to be correct. You can see there's a point there on the cog of the crankshaft that should match up with that indentation area there on the camshaft. 
That will then allow all of this correct timing to take place. For example, when the piston lowers on the induction stroke, the valve opens because the front of the tappet is pushing down on the top of the valve because the push rod is pushing the back of the tappet, pushing the front forward. And that's because the cam follower has pushed up the push rod because the camshaft has rotated the high point of the cam to push up the cam follower. And that's all been made possible by the movement of the crankshaft. And so now when the piston wants to come back up on the compression stroke, that valve needs to be closed, which it is. That's because the cam has carried on rotating off its raised points and now onto its lower points of the cam, allowing the cam follower to rest back down to its lower position. As we've seen, this allows the valve to raise and that closes it. Compression and combustion can now take place because there's no leaks in combustion pressure that will force the piston back down. Inside here now will be the products of combustion, what we know as exhaust gases. And now as the piston approaches the exhaust stroke, the exhaust valve now opens. Because the camshaft has rotated its high point of the second cam at the back there, pushing up its cam follower, and at the same time you'll note that the first cam follower is still at its low position, keeping the inlet valve closed, but the high position of the second cam at the back means that its push rod has been activated upwards, pushing down on its valve, thus opening it. So this makes way for the exhaust gases to exit as the piston rises. And remember, this is all made possible by the perfect positioning of the high and low points of the camshaft, providing it's timed up between the two gears. And if you like that video, then you might like this one. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and consider giving me a thumbs up because it helps me to get my content out to other people and grow my channel. Again, a huge thank you for watching and I'll be back soon.